a C minus chord, a C minor chord rather, is you know C and E flat and G, and those are certain ratio apart from each other. And if you want to make any a D minor chord, it's going to be the same ratio. It's going to be um, let me think a second here. It's a C minor, a D minor chord is going to be a D and F and a um, I think a, a I think um, so. You know those would be those would be the three together. They have a proportion. Well, um, so was the study of music. And of the th four in the quadrivium, we're going to talk a bit about music throughout this course because we're going to be looking, you know, we, we want, I want to emphasize the idea that there is this sort of orderliness. Now, the fourth of the quadrivium was astronomy. Um, in a large way, astronomy was sort of two things, not really... You know, people obviously didn't have a Hubble telescope or things. But back in those days, they used the stars to get around the world. That was the original GPS, was people would learn the stars so that they could know how to position themselves when they were traveling. Look up at the stars and see how the stars moved in the sky, and that told them, told them where they were on the Earth. This also became the study of motion. So astronomy was both the study of, sort of, ge ironically, it was more like what we would now call geography or navigation, and it was what we would now call um, physics, because it was a study of motion. Now, the trivium is more relevant to this class, and in this class we are going to study the entire trivium, sort of in a nutshell, because the trivium are the three arts of language. Grammar is the art of basically the basic rules of language, right? The rules of what symbols mean, as we discussed previously. What... Um, Um, you know, grammar tells us how to spell and how to punctuate and all those types of rules. What syntax and all those. Theoretically, you should know your grammar if you're in a college writing course. We all know in practice that isn't always true, especially at a community college. So we're going to spend some time in this class reviewing grammar. Um, but that's only part of it. Another part of it is um, logic. Okay. Now, logic is the art of reason, okay? Logic is how you put your ideas together in a way that makes sense. Um, how you think critically, how you think analytically, how you, you know, order your ideas. The third of the trivium is rhetoric. Rhetoric is how you make your ideas emotionally appealing, how you craft your writing. Today we call it style, okay? Um, how you, you can say the same thing different ways depending on who you want to address with it and what your purpose is in writing. Um, we're going to spend a lot of emphasis in this course on the latter two. Hopefully, again, I hope we don't have to spend a lot of time on grammar, but I want you to be working in this course on style and I want you to be working in this course on your logic abilities. Um, historically, there's always been a certain tension seen between rhetoric and logic. This dates back to the days of Plato, ancient Greece, because in ancient, you know, ancient Athens was a democracy and it was a society similar, very similar to ours. All right, um, rich young men in Athens were all educated so as to make them good citizens, to make them so that they could participate in the Athenian democracy. And the people who educated the rich young men were known as sophists. Today, we get words like sophomore and sophistry and um, sophisticated from the sophists. And these guys were basically know-it-alls. Um, they were experts in rhetoric. They knew how to make a convincing argument. So, um, they um, would just, um, you know, and maybe one of them became known for a particular subject, but basically when you were known as a sophist, you were a very popular speaker, and you could speak on any topic and people would listen to what you say. And they would come to you for advice and they would hire you for your advice and they would hire you to speak or they would hire you to convince somebody else to do something. Um, you know, today we have, today we use the word guru, right? Um, people like Martha Stewart or James Dobson or um, Dr. Phil or Oprah Winfrey or whoever. I mean, we have them across the spectrum. Um, people who are sort of know-it-alls about you know, and they're maybe good at one or two things that they originally get famous for, but they, they're so famous and have such a following that people will just ask them for advice on any aspect of life and take their advice. Well, that's kind of what the sophists did. Another example I like to use is um, there was this 
show in the 80s called Fraggle Rock, which um, was created by Jim Henson. Um, and um, on Fraggle Rock, there's this character, Convincing John. Um, the song was, Listen to Convincing John, and other troubles will be gone. And, you know, there's several episodes that deal with the character of Convincing John, who was kind of a sophist, and he had this ability to manipulate people, and he would, you know, um, sing a song, and, you know, somebody would want somebody else to do something, or want all the Fraggles to do something, and so they would go to Convincing John, and they would hire him. And then he'd do his convincing, and he'd make the person basically hypnotized into changing their way of thinking, um, and then, of course, disastrous results would follow, so then whoever had originally hired Convincing John would have to come back and have him unconvince the person. And this was a, again, a joke in several different episodes, but that was making fun of sophists and their latter-day um, descendants. Well, of course, again, rhetoric is the art of politics. Um, the politician is, is always a good, is, is, the successful politician is always a good rhetorician. Um, a politician knows how to convince people. A politician knows how to emotionally appeal to people. Even again, as I've noted previously, and as we all know, a lot of times we talk about politicians lying because a politician can give a convincing speech to one group saying, this is what I believe, and then go to another group that believes something different and, and convince them that he or she holds their beliefs. And so giving two totally different perspectives to those two different audiences. This is rhetoric. Well, Plato didn't trust rhetoric. He saw it as deceptive. He saw it as emphasizing emotion over truth. And so Plato said that you should only deal with logic. Um, many people would challenge the realism of the statement, but because of this, there's always been sort of this tension between logic and rhetoric. Many of the things that are considered fallacies in formal logic are actually, you know, effective tricks in the study of rhetoric. Um, but the example of this is, um, you know, but ultimately most people would agree that they're both necessary. Um, you know, if you have rhetoric without logic, again, you have lies. Okay, you have convincing John. You have the ability to manipulate people, but it doesn't really matter if what you're convincing them is true or right or proper, just that you convince them to do it. On the other hand, if you have nothing but logic, nobody's going to be interested in what you have to say. Okay, If you have a science book that's pure science, most people aren't going to be writing, writing, re reading it unless they really are interested in what it has to say or they're required to for a class. Whereas, you know, you can have a science, there are some people who write about science, and they write about science with a great gift of rhetoric. So people love to read their books on science because they have such a great gift for writing effectively that they make science interesting to people who otherwise wouldn't be interested in science. Or people who write about religion or other subjects, and they write it with such a great gift of rhetoric as well as logic so that, you know, what they write is, is well-reasoned and people like it that way, and it's also... It, 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 you know, enjoyable to read. So those are the three arts of the, what we call the trivium of the liberal arts. L logic, rhetoric, and grammar. Gr logic, rhetoric, and grammar. And that's what we will be studying in this class.